So we're going to get started with the agenda portion of the meeting, the agenda review session. Uh, first, we have ordinances on second reading. Ordinance number 701, an ordinance to adopt the New Brunswick Cultural Center Redevelopment Plan area in the city of New Brunswick. 702, an ordinance to adopt, to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the city of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 10.16, Stopping and Standing and Parking, Section 10.16.050, Schedule 29, Timeline, Parking, reference to Union Street. 703, an ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinances of the city of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 10.16, Stopping and Standing, uh, Standing and Parking, Section 10.16.020, Schedule 24, No Parking Anytime, reference to Wilcox Road. All right, we have no ordinances on first reading. So we'll go to resolutions. Resolution 701, approve agenda amendment. 702, approve payroll. 703, authorize refund for the redeemed tax sale certificates. 704, authorize renewal of agreement with Middlesex, with County of Middlesex for basic life support program for 2017, amount to be received, $53,000. 705, authorize general, Okay, 705, authorize general application acceptance and execution of a grant for 2018 for 2018 pedestrian safety enforcement and education grant. 706, approve a professional service agreement with Innovative Data Solutions, doing business as Power DMS Incorporated for Power Suite, uh, Power Suite subscription for police department. Term 12 month period commencing February 23rd, 2017 and ending uh, February 22nd, 2018, not to exceed $6,022. 707, approve amendment for resolution, reason to pay $845.80 for interpreting service with Elsa Gonzalez and Paraplus Translators Incorporated for interpreters for the municipal court, court not to exceed $845.80, specification number 497-16 RFP. 708, uh, 708, Approve award of contract with gold type business machines doing business as GTBM for the renewal of proprietary software licenses 31 info cup uh, annual license renewals term 12 month period uh, commencing January 20th 2017 and ending January 29th 2018 not to exceed six thousand six five hundred and sixty two dollars and forty six six non pro tone. 709, approve amendment of resolution R-011756 to pay additional legal fees in the amount of $22,706.37 to the De Palma Law Firm LLC for Special Counsel City of New Brunswick adds Marvick Construction Corporation from $227,766 to $250,484.03. 710, approve emergency temporary appropriation for 2017. 711, approve transfer of appropriation reserves uh, for 2016 municipal budget. Our, uh, 712, approve purchase by police department under state contract A-89, 89851 for SHI International Corporation for annual software support and maintenance for the police department. 12, uh, 12 month period commencing January 1st, 2017 and ending December 31st, 2017, not to exceed $67,331.10, non pro tonk. <coughs> 713, approve the request for street closing, requested by Our Lady of Mount Carmel Roman Catholic Church, location Morris Street, George Street, Livingston Avenue, for Good Friday procession, Friday, April 14, 2017, time 7 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. 714, approve request for street closing, Requested by Johnson & Johnson, location, Livingston Avenue between George Street, New Street, for Johnson & Johnson annual shareholders meeting. Date, Thursday, April 27, 2017, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., police extra duty. All right, we have 715, approve amendment of resolution, R-041-630. Reason to pay final invoices in the amount of $26,515.11 to O'Connor Davies LLP for forensic accounting expert litigation, advisory services, City of New Brunswick Ad ADS, uh, Marbeck Construction Company, not to exceed $26,515.11. 716, approve request for the use of city property 
Requested by Rutgers Hillel, location Bugalo Park in Pavilion for 5K run walk and one mile run walk date Sunday, April 30, 2017. Time 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, 717. Impress approved request for the use of city property. Requested by Tree of Life Church, location War Memorial Park for religious event. Dates June 10, uh, July 18, August 12, 2017. For rain dates Sunday, June 11, July 9. August 13, 2017, time 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 718, request for use of city property, TBD Vision LLC for uh, the location Boyd Park Amphitheater for playground art festival event. Saturday, a uh, date Saturday, June 10, 2017, rain date Saturday, June 24, 2017, time 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. 719, approved request for the use of city property. Requested by Redshaw Elementary School, New Brunswick Board of Education, location New Sports Complex, Teen Center, for Redshaw Elementary School Field Day, date Friday, June 9, 2017, rain date Monday, June 12, 2017, time 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. 720, approve the amendment of resolution R-421-638, R change order number one, revision B, with Suburban Consulting Incorporated, for construction, inspection, and engineering services for the 2015 sanitary sewer systems improvements project phase 1A, 1B, uh, 2A, and 2B, specification number 899-15-RFP, amount $22,700, approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the amount of the original contract, 721. Approve amendment resolution of change order number two with suburban consulting engineers for construction and inspection and engineering services for the 2015 sewer system. Improvements project phase 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B, specification number 899-15 RFP, amount $1,800. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 722, approve amendment. Or resolution R R11-628, reason to pay the additional fees in the amount of $11,842 to Warren Pro LLC for professional engineering expert services of the City of New Brunswick at uh, Marbeck Construction Company, uh, Corporation from $56,276.47 40, to $68,118.61. 723, approve award of contract, furnish and deliver chemicals for bulk feed facilities with Greer Lime Company, Chemical Chem Trade Chemicals, JCI Jones Chemicals, Univar USA Incorporated, Shannon Chemical, <coughs> term 12 month period commencing February 2nd, 2017, and ending January 31st, 2018. Specification number 106201 17W. 724, Approve a payment of special public defender services to Thomas P. Abode, LLC, not to exceed $2,100. $725, authorize the mayor and city clerk to authorize and execute a contract with Gloria and Sons, LLC, for a facade, facade matching grant program in the Esperanza neighborhood using UDA G funds. Location 350 Saddam Street, block number 160, lot number 21, not to exceed $19,328.80. <laughs> 726, approved, approved request for parking of vehicles in Bugalo Park, requested by Turner Construction Company for up to 30, 30 parking permits, date January 30, 2017 to April 30, 2017, cost $30 per vehicle per month, non pro tonk. 727, approved amendment of resolution R-121-657, reason to pay the additional legal fees in the amount of $4,918 to Benedict and Altman for Police Director Anthony Caputo in the matter of Steve Middleton et al. versus the City of New Brunswick from $24,858 to $29,776.50. 728, authorized the lease of a copy machine for the Division of Parks, Recall USA, Recall USA for one Recall model C number C2503, color digital copier machine, not to exceed $176.15 per month, con commencing March 1st, 2017 and ending February 28, 2021.
48 month contract, state contract number 404 67 slash G207 75 coppers, maintenance and supplies. 729 authorized the purchase by police department of the state contract from Lanigan Associates for 32 bulletproof vests for the police department, not to exceed $24,200. 730, approve amendment of resolution R-031460, change order number one, with Suburban Consulting Engineers Incorporated, engineering services for sanitary and storm sewer replacement, rehabilitation improvements, project specification 84314R, FP, amount $52,369. Approve this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. Uh, will, excuse me, thank you. All right, 731, <laughs> yeah, 731. Approve the amendment of resolution R12, 121-632, change order number 8, RVA, REVA, for Underground Utilities Corporation, for 2015 Sanitary Sewer System Improvement, Project uh, dash Phase 1A, specification number 892-15A, amount of $41,600. Approval of this change order will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 732, approved purchase by the Police Department of the State Contract from Hertage Fleet Services Incorporated for two 2017 Ford Fusion sedans, not to exceed $34,800. 733, Approve award of contract with CI Technologies Incorporated for maintenance of uh, for annual maintenance contract for proprietary software for the police department. Term 12 month period commencing February 2nd, 2017 and ending January 31st, 2018, not to exceed $1,144. 734, approve request for solicitation of funds requested by Rutgers University Dance Marathon to, ben to benefit Embrace Kids Foundation. Dates Friday, Saturday, Sunday, February 10th through the 12th, 2017, February 24th to 26th, 2017, March 3rd through the 5th, 2017. Time, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Locations, George and Byard Street. George and Church Streets, George and Albany Streets, George and Commercial Avenue, George Street and Nickel Avenue, George Street and Livingston Avenue, George Street and Liberty Street, and Riders Lane and Dudley Road. 735, approve amendment for the resolution R-101-619. Reason to pay the additional legal fees in the amount of $926.50 to Benedict and Altman for Detectives Brent Gregers in the matter of Dietrich Stolen City of versus City of New Jersey <coughs> et al. from $8,162.50 to $9,089. $736, award of contract for the authorization rebid. Interpreters for the municipal court with Judith Graysburg, Louis Agarte, ASL Interpreter Referral Services Incorporated, Car Plus Translators Incorporated for 12 month period commencing February 4th, 2017, ending February 3rd, 2018. Specification number 580. Dash 17 RFP, not to exceed $24,000. 737, advise and consent to rent leveling board, reference to appointments and, and appointments and appointment. Name Wendy Stel Stelatella, expires December 31st, 2019, three years. Name Alex Laris, student rep, December expires December 31st, 2017, one year. Uh, name Margaret Avondo, landlord rep. December 30 expires December 31st, 2019, three years. 738 of absolute of uh, uh, proof award of contract with absolute fire protection for fire aerial ladder service of uh, the repaired services. Term 12 month period commencing February 2nd, 2017 and ending February 1st, 2018. Specification number 573, 16P, not to exceed $20,000. Uh, 739, approve amendment of resolution, reason to change certification of funds account number to 2-528 and 2-308 for the water utility with Enterprise Automation Incorporated for maintenance and repairs of supervisory pro control of data acquisition <coughs> SCADA system. Specification number 521-16R, FP, not to exceed $175,000. 740, approve amendment of resolution, change, reason, change certification of funds account to 2-528 for the water utility with B&W Construction Company of New, of New Jersey for equipment and labor, specification number 561-16P, not to exceed $13,035.68. 41, approve the amendment of resolution R-08, uh, R, okay, R-02, 
1740 reason to pay $39,534.28 for 2016 invoices for the Public Works Department of BMW Construction of New Jersey for equipment and labor not to exceed $39,535.28. Approval of this change order will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 742, approve amendment of resolution R-071628, reason, change of certification of funds account, number five, number two, 2-528 for the water utility with municipal maintenance company for the mechanical, mechanical and electrical maintenance and emergency repair work at the water treatment plant and pump station, specification number 49615W, not to exceed $221,475. 743, approve amendment of resolution R-121-668, reason, change certification of funds account, number to 2-528 for the water utility with Garrison Enterprise Incorporated for furnish, deliver, and install insertion valves, line stops, emergency valve repair replacement, specification number 560-16W, not to exceed $200,000. 744, approve amendment and resolution of R-121-634, reason to extend the contract one additional year, commencing February 4th, 2017 and ending February 3rd, 2018, with Sal Electric Company Incorporated for the electrical maintenance and repair services, specification 494-15P, not to exceed $106,000. 745, approve the relaxation of the noise ordinance, requested by Midnight Signs Incorporated, Reason replacement of an existing sign on the New Brunswick Parking Authority Morris Street parking deck. Uh, date Saturday, uh, January 28, 2017. Alternate date uh, Saturday, February 4, 2017. Time 8 p.m. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. non pro tunk. 746. Approve the amendment of resolution <coughs> R-111651. Reason for the additional date to perform work. Or approve of relaxation of the noise ordinance requested by Lucero Mendez Construction LLC. Reason for replacement of a significant area of concrete sidewalk in front of 25 for Packer Street. Date Saturday, January 28th, uh, January 28th and February 4th, 2017. Alternate date Saturday, February 11th and 18th, 2017. Uh, time 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. non pro tunk. 747 approve award of contract with Hatch McDonald. For 2017 miscellaneous supplemental engineering services, specification number 907-17-RFP, not to exceed $70,000 fair and open. 748, approve award of contract, on-site fleet service incorporated, emergency vehicles, parts and repair service with the fire department, term 12-month period commencing February 2nd, 2017, ending February 1st, 2018, specification number 567-16P, not to exceed $100,000. 749, approval board of contract with business and governmental uh, agency BGIA for insurance brokerage services prescription program. Term 12 month period commencing February 1st, 2017, ending January 31st, 2018. And thereafter, an additional 12 months should the city so desire. Specification number 575 17 RFP 750 7750. Authorized application acceptance of the execution of the grant. Agreement for the 2017 New Jersey Department of Law and Public Safety, Division of Highway and Traffic Safety for the 2017 Distracted Driving Crackdown, You Drive, You Text, You Pay. Amount $5,500. 751, authorized the tax collector to transfer overpayments on several tax and utility accounts. 752, approved site performance bond reduction to Westchester Fire Insurance Company for 760 Jersey Avenue, Block Number 598, Lot number 303. Dot, no, lot number 3.03. Then we got items for public discussion and everything else. Anything else? All right. The meeting will come to order with a clerk. Please do us the honor of taking the roll. Council Vice President Anderson? Here. Council Member Egan? Here. Council Member Escobar? Here. Council Member Socorro Ludwig? Here. Council President Fleming? Here. Please be advised that the notice of the general of the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act have been complied with and satisfied in that annual notice, which gave sufficient notice to the time and place and the conduct of all meetings of the Municipal Council of the City of New Brunswick. 
has been filed with the city clerk and has been placed at the appropriate bulletin board on the lobby of the city hall, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the city of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. Can we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Downtown, there's two two uh, uh, big plans in the offing, right? There's this plan, uh, but there's also the Ferron parking deck site that's being torn down presently. It's quite a sight to see, and that is going to be an even bigger site where plans call for uh, as many as four skyscrapers, not just one. My question is. If the city is setting out to build a cultural center, a performing arts center of sorts, you know, theaters and uh, uh, housing on top, or maybe offices as well, why not do that on the site that's about to be vacant, the site that's closer to the train station, uh, more prominent, more easily accessible, uh, a, a better example of transit-oriented development than this plan, which is to destroy two uh, long-standing theaters, forcing those theaters to find temporary spaces for however long the construction takes, which is expected to be at least two years. Um, why not let them stay in the spaces and build the Performing Arts Center or, or you know, Cultural Center uh, on this newly freed up huge swath of land um, just a few blocks away and even closer to the train station? Why, why isn't that the plan? Well, we yeah. Yes, Councilman. Um, the uh, properties uh, to my right over here are the cultural center for New Brunswick. Uh, the plan does not um, involve the state theater building. It does not involve the Mason Gross School of the Arts. So they would still be here if we were uh, following uh, Mr. Craddle's uh, suggestion. Uh, the master plan calls for uh, cultural activities to be concentrated in a distinct district. So that is what we're uh, doing here. This cultural center has been uh, extremely successful. It's one of the leading uh, cultural center in, in Central Jersey, if, if not the state. Um, and you want to have all those theaters uh, next to each, each other. Uh, they feed off of each other. Uh, you get the restaurants uh, uh, next to each other, uh, uh, supporting them. And uh, that makes a lot of sense to have them uh, together like that. They share a lot of services. Uh, they'll probably be sharing uh, loading docks and, and uh, um, different lobby accesses and so forth. So there, there's a, a lot of uh, benefits to having them, them all together. Secondly, the Farron site, we believe, is a very uh, good site for uh, more private style development, to bring office tenants and retail uh, into town rather than uh, uh, the theaters. The theaters 
for the most part of the day, tend to be dark, whereas uh, the Farron site Mr. Cradville is referring to is uh, right by the train station. It's a very active uh, uh, part of town, and we think it would be better to have that activated all during uh, the, the day rather than uh, just at the, uh, in, in the nighttime hours. Uh, so we think the plan that we're calling for makes sense, and it's uh, how New Brunswick has uh, developed, and uh, we think we'll make it for a better New Brunswick in the future. Thank you for the thorough uh, explanation of your position. I did want to um, ask what the relocation arrangements are for the two theaters that will uh, be losing their space after this season. Have they uh, been able to find locations to um, continue their operations while the construction is going on? If so, where are those locations? They are working um, out where they will uh, relocate. I think they're uh, working with, uh, with Rutgers and some other um, entities in town looking for some uh, uh, temporary spaces, and that will all be uh, worked out. The theaters are uh, very supportive of this plan, and it's going to give them a uh, much nicer, newer uh, theater space than what they have now. I could also uh, say that the city market is also working. So to make sure that people know it's not going dark at all, the plays will still go on. They will just be at different locations. Gotcha. And uh, is it true that uh, one of those locations is outside New Brunswick? Is, that, is it true that one of the locations? I don't know that they finalized on a, on a location. Um, I think I know what Mr. Cradwell is referring to. It, it, I think most people would probably think that's in New Brunswick, but uh, it might technically be over uh, just over the uh, into North Brunswick, uh, the old uh, agricultural uh, museum is one of the things under consideration, but I don't know that any uh, things been finalized on that. Thank you. Thank you again. And I'll just submit for your for your consideration that uh, if it's a, such an important goal to keep these theaters um, together, uh, I have some concerns about them being split up and one of them having to be in a different town for a couple of years. Um, what assurances can you give the public or the, the theaters that the, the new spaces will be available by a certain date? Is there a timeline? Is there a a plan to make sure that they would be back in New Brunswick in the new spaces that they so desperately want uh, by a certain time, or is this an open-ended, indefinite uh, thing where a temporary arrangement could end up lasting three or four or five years? I think the all intents and purposes is that any construction plans, they have plans to go a certain amount of time, but you never know what can happen. I mean, we can, <laughs> all good intentions we can have, but I don't think that's their intention to stay out of town for far too long. I mean, Mr. Patterson wants to help. Yeah. Um, the redevelopment plan doesn't deal with what the construction timetables are for uh, the project, but um, as you just stated, the, um, the working towards uh, getting them uh, done in, within two seasons. Um, the theaters have been, been working with uh, New Brunswick Development Corporation uh, on developing this. The theaters want this. This is something that they want and are very uh, supportive of. And the redevelopment plan does require that the two theaters uh, be replaced, that there be two new theaters in the uh, new plan, uh, new project that is uh, developed here. And we have, I mean, as I said, we've survived where at one point Crossroads was way down here, all the way here, and then George Street Playhouse was actually on George, you know, way here on George Street. And we still, that was our budding theater district. And then when they came together, it was positive. And I think this is only going to make it better, personally. Okay, thank you. My, my concern stems from past uh, situations like the Redshaw School where the building was torn down, the new school was promised, and it ended up taking seven or eight years to get the that new school. State, that was a state funding issue. You know, we had, you really had no control. And, and we weren't the only ones that was, that was like that. I mean, I know several towns where we did, get our, we did get our school, and I know some towns right now that they still have empty lots after nine or ten years where they tore down entire neighborhoods. And they still, that stem empty lot is still there. So I think we were fortunate to get it. Even though it did take a long time, we still kept our eyes on what the final goal was. Thanks. And yeah, so, so that speaks to my point. I want to know what assurances are given. It was mentioned DEVCO is involved. Um, you know, what, uh, what is the financing for this project? Is this financing that could dry up in the same way that the School Construction Corporation funding dried up, or is this financing that's lock, you know, rock solid going to definitely happen? Um, what, you know, I'm just trying to think ahead to the potential pitfalls. You know, what, what, what can we do to prevent that? What, uh, what, what is the funding for this project? The um, 
redeveloper hasn't been named for the project yet, so there's no financing for the project at this time. They are pursuing a number of different financing avenues. Um, as part of getting those uh, financing approvals, they have to show that the project is, is feasible and can uh, go forward. There are no guarantees in life. Um, things uh, can change if you know, there's you know, force majeure, uh, uh, things like that, that um, could do it. So I won't you know, guarantee that it will be done. But failure to move because of a uh, uh, possibility that something might go wrong means that you never make progress. And I think this city has shown over 30 years here of uh, taking uh, the, the reasonable risk to make progress, and we've made a tremendous amount of progress in this city to make it a better city. And we're going to continue to do that with this project. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just think it's interesting. It was said that uh, DevCo is involved yet no redeveloper has been named. Uh, what do you think the chances are that DevCo will be the redeveloper? <laughs> Mr. Crowderville knows from his history here in town that we work with uh, different developers uh, through the redevelopment planning process. Uh, that's how it works. That's so we can be efficient and we can try to uh, assuage some of the concerns Mr. Crowderville has about uh, the risks that are, are involved. We're not looking to go forward here, knock things down, then go look for a, uh, a developer. This is a project that is a public-private partnership. It's being worked out with the theaters uh, so that uh, they are part of it, part of the design. They are, as I said uh, a couple of times here, they are in favor of this and, uh, and supportive of it. And we think it's going to be uh, a uh, shining star for uh, the city. You also got uh, EDA money. Yeah, that's one of the things they are, are, uh, are pursuing uh, right now. And, uh, you know, I think DEPCO has a, a good history of, uh, of completing the projects. They usually work with their contractors with guaranteed maximum price contracts to uh, um, ensure that things get done uh, on time. Uh, they just finished uh, a number of buildings up on the, the College Avenue area you know, on time up there. Things got, uh, got open uh, before the semester start. That's a similar situation that you deal with with the theaters when they have uh, dates when their uh, uh, traditional theater season starts. So um, I think uh, um, we have a good track record in uh, completing projects like this, and I uh, believe this will continue. I'm not going to guarantee it, but uh, we have a very good track record, and it's a reasonable risk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, through, through you for, for Mr. Egan, could I just hear a little bit more about the EDA money that's involved in this project? Please. Please. Well, it's, it's no secret that the governor signed the uh, 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 a, uh, a uh, law or whatever to uh, this this project is going to receive money from the Economic Development Authority. Millions? Yes. Okay, and also the county government? Excuse me? Also the county government chipping in too, right? Yes. But the EDA money is in the millions, yes. Okay. Did you? Um, yes. 40 million? 40. 40. I, thought 40. Was, I thought it was 80. 40 million. Yeah, you say, oh, 40 million. Yes. In the EDA. Okay. So, uh, I guess the, the only other question I have is when uh, would the housing authority and the redevelopment authority have to, you know, when, when are they expected to make their decision on who the redeveloper is and, and where does it go from there? Um, first, you know, this has to get through uh, the council uh, adopting the plan. Once that is, is adopted, uh, adopted, um, an application to be made to, to the housing authority. Uh, it's possible it could be uh, later this month, but I would expect uh, you know, either you know, this month, next month, that uh, an application will be made to uh, be redeveloped. Okay, and then it would have to, an actual site plan would have to be presented to the planning board, is that correct? As well? Yes, uh, uh, preliminary uh, concept plans will be uh, uh, shown to the housing authority for being designated as a redeveloper. And the project, just like other normal projects in town, is subject to uh, site plan and variance review by the uh, planning board. Thank you very much for answering Thank the questions. You. Anybody else have any questions on the ordinance? Any concerns? Seeing none. Motion. Second. Council member, Council Vice President Anderson. Yes. Council member Egan. Yes. Council member Escobar. Yes. Council member Sikora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Fleming. Yes. All right, next, 702, an ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 10, that's 10, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 10.16, Stopping and Standing. 
Parking in Section 10.16050, Schedule 29. Time limit parking reference to Union Street. Does anybody from the public wish to speak on this ordinance? Please step forward, your name and address. Good evening once again, Charles Crabville, New Brunswick, New Brunswick today. Uh, can I ask whose idea this was? Yes. Whose idea was the ordinance to amend and supplement? Okay. We had a lot of complaints about a lot of vehicles parked on Union Street that parked there all day. People were going to the train station here and there, so we decided to open it up for the yard and a lot of more businesses there. there. We'll put meters on one side and short term so you can get a turn over park. So just to be clear, there'll be parking meters added to one side of Union Street and the other side will remain as it's been or? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, were any, you know, the, the, the folks who live on Union Street consulted? Were they the ones complaining? Um, yeah. Some of the people that live there, but they have all street parking themselves already. But there's a lot of them that were going to different locations and parking all day. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Seeing none? <coughs> so moved. <laughs> Council Vice President Anderson? Yes. Council Member Egan? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Member Socorro Ludwig? Yes. Council President Fleming? Yes. All right, we got an ordinance 703. An ordinance to, oh, no. yes. an ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 10, Field of Traffic. Uh, chapter 10.16, Stopping and Standing and Parking, Section 10.16.020, Schedule 24, No Parking at Any Time, Reference to Wilcox Road. Will anybody from the public wish to speak on this one? Once again, Charles Crabble, New Brunswick, New Brunswick Today, same question. What, uh, whose idea was this? What's the purpose? Okay. The council will address that. There is an, uh, uh, Wilcox Road has a kind of a sharp turn in one area. There's a a series of cars that were parked there. There was complaints that two-way traffic was difficult. So because of an existing hedge and the geometry of the road, we're making just a short section, about 110 feet, as a non, as a no parking in the time zone, just so the traffic can flow around the sharp point. Thank you very much. Would anybody else from the public like to speak on this one? Seeing none. You it. Second. Council Vice President Anderson. Yes. Council Member Egan. Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Councilmember Socorro Ludwig? Yes. Council President Fleming? Yes. All right, now we have resolutions. Is anybody from the public, from resolution, zero, uh, resolution 01 all the way to the end, Would anybody from the public please step forward, give your name and address. For the record, once Thank you. Charles Crabbill, New Brunswick, New Brunswick Today. Thanks for the chance to address you. I noticed some, I guess maybe trends isn't the right word, but some themes here, so I'll ask about these in groups. So starting with number six and uh, 12 and 33. These are all software for the police department. I'd just like to know what the software does. So 6, 12, and 33. 6, 12, and 33. Officer. Uh, number, number 6 is the Power DMS. That software that supports, um, the, it's an educational tool and record management tool for the police department. A lot of training has gone on it. All um, records are stored on it. Officers can go there to review all the past policies and procedures, flash training documents. Uh, that software supports that system. Uh, Twelve uh, SHI International. That is for the support and maintenance of the CADS and the record management system and dispatch. What's the last one? Uh, the, I, I also I missed eight. So while we're on this page, eight is the InfoCop software. Is that cop? That's twelve licenses for the NDT in the car, which allow the officers to do more vehicle lookups. Okay, and then 33 would be the other one. Uh, 33 is for the Wausau system, which is a report writing system. We're going to write reports in the view. Report writing. Okay. Um, I guess we go to uh, page 8 and 9. I see several items here. Uh, 
4243 are all change certification of funds accounts for the water utilities. This is uh, something I don't recall seeing before. Can you tell me what it means to, to approve a change certification or why this why these are necessary and what these uh, amounts, uh, what the significance is of this? Change, uh, you said 39. Sorry, it's uh, number 39 uh, and number 40 for the water. Are right. both water utility change certifications. Then on the next page is uh, 42 and 43 are, are also similar water utility change certifications. What does that mean? Mr. Marchetta or Okay, please. Okay. Really, it's just um, these were already pre approved contracts that have gone before council before. We're just reallocating money that was coming out of the capital fund mm -hmm. and moving it into our O and E budget. Okay, so it's, you know, we're going to be looking at some of these projects as being recurring uh, with these companies, you know, constantly updating the system and the infrastructure. And, uh, you know, it was, it was some work and, you know, we were able to do it. So it's, it's a much better way of doing it. Okay, thanks for the explanation. Glad to uh, hear the water director is allowed to uh, speak to me. Um, to the chair. Okay, I, I'm, just, I'm glad. I'm glad that the water director is uh, willing to answer those questions. I hope he'll answer the other ones. Uh, okay. Don't count on. Okay. Just okay. 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 Well, I'll okay. Right, anyway. Number nine is the uh, very expensive. Lawsuit. The legal bills are now uh, uh, over two hundred fifty dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you'll also notice number fifteen and number twenty-two are, I guess, expert witnesses or people who helped with the case. That's twenty-six thousand and sixty-eight thousand, and I think that's it for this agenda with that one case. Can you tell me how did the city win or lose? Or we don't know yet. That's the more of it. That's yeah. the one you're referring to. I believe that's still. Uh, we don't have a decision yet, Mr. Council President. The final briefs are being uh, prepared to be submitted at least several months before we have a decision. Several months. Okay. And can we expect more bills in those coming months, or will it quiet down? We really don't. Uh, we anticipate more bills from Mr. De Palma. I think there's one here that's a final on the forensic count. So we won't, we won't expect any additional bills from that firm. Um, and one pro, I believe, may be consulted during the final uh, preparation briefs and arguments. So I can't guarantee that that uh, vendor won't have a traditional bill in the future. We we certainly this is the case, though. So oh, it's a very fighting. substantial claim, yes. And we'll have to defend it. Thank you. Uh, now on to page two, number four, uh, basic life support programs, $53,000. Can you tell me what those basic life support programs are uh, that, that, you can't, that you're working with the county on? Yes. yes. For uh, ambulance service to run on Jackson University Hospital. Did you get that? Interesting. So uh, I thought Robert Wood Johnson provided free ambulance service to the city. Is that uh, not true? I guess the county chips in, or who's paying the 53000 Okay, so so we're paying the county fifty three thousand, or we're paying Robert Wood Johnson fifty three thousand. Robert Wood Johnson. Okay, and what are we getting for the fifty three thousand? So that means they'll they'll just answer any call that the ambulance any call for an ambulance. What are the terms of the agreement? I just want to know the base. I want to understand. This. The, the money comes to us through the county to defray the cost, so the county is involved, and it's 53000 and wants to provide ambulance services to residents in the city of New Brunswick who may find me to go to the hospital. So the money's actually coming from the county through the city? To defer the cost, correct. Okay. Does anybody know the total cost? Is the total cost 53000 or is that just the cost that the county's choosing? This is the cost of the one-year term. This is an annual contract that uh, um, we enter into an agreement every year. I think the amount varies a little bit. And the calculation of which I don't know how they arrive at the number, but I suspect mm -hmm. it's based upon polls for service. So, so yeah, my question is is still, uh, I think, valid. It says, basic life support programs for uh, 2017 amount to be received, 53000 So I can only assume that means that's the county's 
uh, portion, and Mr. Shammy has indicated that it's meant to defray the cost to the city. Does anybody know the total cost to the city? Because I was under the impression Robert Wood was doing this for free because they're based here. Um, but, but apparently they're, they're getting at least $53,000 a year to do the ambulances. I don't know that. We don't have the total cost. We don't have it. Okay, well, I guess... Mr. Lockwood could probably be better to answer that, but unfortunately he's, he's taking it. He needs space, yes. He's, he's not here today. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I hope he returns soon and maybe he can get me that answer. I uh, you know, can't be against defraying the cost. I, I just think it's important to know the total cost. Uh, and that would be a, an interesting fact, at least something I want to know. And uh, almost done. Uh, the, I'd like to ask uh, about the chemicals. For the, this is nearly a, nearly a million dollars in chemicals. Uh, 723. Uh, I presume it's for the water utility. <coughs> and I'd like to ask, just in general, uh, what changes have been made to the chemicals that are being used in uh, you know recently, um, and how does this differ from the you know like say for instance what we ordered last year. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the the recent bidding that, that came in. Um, there really was no significant increase um, across the board in in total, and um, our chemicals haven't changed, and our consumption is is pretty much the same as it was last year. Okay. Some potassium permanganate being used now or no? Yes, it is. It is. Yes, it is. Okay. Wonderful. Um, next one, 726 is the, uh, this is a great deal. If I could get this kind of deal on parking, uh, I would do it 30 bucks per vehicle per month for a Turner construction to park in Ugalo Park. Is, uh, what is this for? What's this, is this for the expansion of the construction? That's a project that they're working on, correct? It's a project at the, uh, the hospital, St. Peter's and Hospital. And they, they don't have, around St. Peter's Hospital, it's a little congested. And since we had the space in people to park, well, that was a good revenue service, a uh, revenue generator. Is this a good revenue generator? Thirty bucks per vehicle per month. I mean, we're, we're not making, looking to make a, a ton of money. We're helping out St. Peter's Hospital with their project. Help them along. I got you. Which project is this? Is this the the old Votech school, or is this that I don't know. <coughs> Tom Love would have it. Okay, oh, I, I I have that, but oh, I. I'll, I can get that for him. Okay. I don't have it right here. Thank you. I, I would appreciate that. Um, and uh, you know, I guess I, I, I just want to uh, mention that uh, there's legal bills here for the city police department in two cases. Um, both of them are, are being paid to Benedict and Altman, that uh, law firm. And gosh, I just think it's, it's crazy that the police director doesn't come here. If you're paying his legal bills in all these cases, the least he could do is, is show up at one council meeting. I, I and I, I don't understand why this police director has a different practice than you know the prior police directors who used to come to the meetings. I don't understand why uh, the other directors come to the meetings, but not the police director. Never, and it just doesn't make sense to me. I think accountability starts at the top, and who should? Is it a standard resolution. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, probably. Oh, one more. Uh, well, two more. Uh, Hatchmont McDonald, uh, 747. Uh, miscellaneous supplemental engineering services. Can you tell me what, the mis what are those miscellaneous services? Uh, sorry, this is uh, miscellaneous, oh, for the engineering services. Yes. Uh, please, the council, yes. Every year we enter, uh, we do an RFP for supplemental engineering services. Those services include uh, the C4 license operator for the sanitary system, which is funded through the public works. In addition, we uh, use the uh, services for CAD support for in-house design, some of our paving projects that we do in design, as well as uh, we have a plethora of, of availability of professionals to support our department in some of our projects. Thank you. So they provide C4 uh, uh, license software, license person. Interesting. Thank you. Thank last you. one I want to ask is the last one. I know I've done Just the last one. Uh, site performance bond reduction. Can you just explain what, why? Uh, the uh, site bond is being reduced, and, and can you clarify whether all the junk on this uh, particular site has been cleaned up? Specific to the bond reduction, uh, 760 was a, a large site plan application, which was uh, gone through normal channels and approved. Uh, 
They have requested a bond reduction. They are complete with the plans with them, uh, the exception we want a clarification on some stone that they use along the, uh, the Jersey Avenue corridor, which is NJDOT right away, so we're just waiting for a letter of clarification. Uh, specific to the site, there is a pile of concrete rubble which they intend to crush and reuse. Uh, we're not going to finalize the release of the remaining funds until that those uh, those items are removed from the site. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time. Anybody else on the resolutions? Yes. Please step forward with your name and address for the record. And a reminder that you have five minutes. Evan and Jamori, 60 Patterson Street. Um, so this is my first city council hearing, to be honest. I'm um, so curious as to what the nature is of the lawsuit between what it sounds like is New Brunswick and another entity, because I believe that the previous speaker brought it up, but I'm just not sure what the clarification is around that. Which one is specific? Which one are It was the lawsuit that he mentioned between the uh, city of New Brunswick and another entity. Okay. Maybe it's more back. There's a few of them on here. Yeah. It deals with the construction yeah. contract. Uh, That's currently in litigation. Yeah, an allegation of breach. <coughs> and we don't discuss pending litigation matters in public meetings, but that's the nature and extent of it. The matter went to arbitration as it was required to do under the contract documents, and uh, we are litigating the matter in that form. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else on the resolutions? Seeing none, move the resolution. Second. Council Vice President Anderson. Yes. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Member Sephora Ledwig. Yes. Council President Fleming. Yes. All right, now we're going to go to the public portion. We're going to remind you to please step forward to the microphone. Please give your name and address for the record. And reminder that you have five minutes. Please step forward, anybody. Street in Grumbuck, New Jersey. Um, just to give myself a, a brief intro, um, I'm a current employee at Robert Johnson under uh, Rutgers University. Um, I've been working there for the past five years. Currently, I'm a cardiology fellow that means a cardiologist in training. Um, I've been there, like I said, for five years. Our job involves working with patients, um, being the first line of defense when a patient comes into the hospital or when any one of our numerous number of clinics. Um, uh, that, that are facilitated by Rutgers University. Um, in October of this past year, uh, Rutgers has moved, has moved to a new payroll system um, that effectively uh, caused 5,000 plus employees to lose a, uh, one, week's, uh, one week's of pay. Um, we represent, as a committee of residents and inter uh, as a committee of interns and residents, about uh, 1,000 em uh, employees under the Rutgers University system. Um, as a delegate of the uh, Committee of Interns and Residents, we, I understand there is a law on the books, a anti-wage theft law um, at, in New Brunswick. Um, I was wondering if anything, we were hoping, we have multiple members here um, testifying to the effects of this wage loss um, on their each individual lives. I was hoping that uh, if anyone in the council or the council in general can help us out in our battle to recuperate these wages. Um, effectively, we worked, we worked three weeks and got only two weeks worth of wages. This affects everyone from our attendings, our senior physicians, to all the way to the uh, most junior uh, physicians that are starting out in the training. I know that we, we do have a wage that ordinance, and we can take a look at it, you know, and go through the effective through the system, and you know how it works out, you know, one way or the other. Uh, we do take what you said seriously because it has happened between the city, and you know. Things have been resolved, and if you guys can, you said you're the official spokesperson. We can get in touch, and we can push you, push you through the proper channels. Okay. Thank you. Then. All right. Um, there are a few of us who are also leaving. We're third year fellows, and we're moving on to you know jobs in the next five months. So timing is another issue. I'm moving to Virginia. You know there are things that are happening in our lives, and 
I mean, we do our work, we come to work, we do, we take care of patients, we, you know, see everybody. We're not asking for more money, we're just asking for money that we're owed. So we would, you know, appreciate if you guys could help us in a timely fashion. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Council President, just so the group can hear this, um, Mr. Patterson's office um, is in charge of carrying out the mandate of the sick leave ordinance. And there's a formal process under the, under the ordinance that if these folks want to make a complaint to see, number one, if they're covered under it, number two, um, there's a mediation process that the ordinance provides for. Um, I don't but I don't understand. It's just a wage that yes, not sick Yes, oh, it's oh, a wage that yeah. yes, yes, Sick okay, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> you say you're good. Yeah, so I, 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 <laughs> I totally misunderstood. Okay. Don't worry Disregard about it. Disregard any of that. Yes. Yes. Mr. Patel, what is the hospital saying that why they are not paying? So it's, uh, it's, it's two different entities. We work at Robert Johnson University Hospital, which is a private entity, and we are employed by Rutgers University, which is obviously a public entity. Um, the issue yeah, that yeah, what is Rutgers, well, Rutgers is essentially saying, saying that we switch payrolls. Now, every one of us understands that sometimes computers malfunction. We are willing to work with Rutgers. However, it's been four months. And like uh, my colleague said, um, Dr. Reddy has said that, you know, with timing is kind of a factor. Um, the deal that they had offered us is that one day extra pay per year per five, over five years to compensate for that one week's of pay. Now, some of us won't even be here at five weeks. This is not a normal job. This is not something that we plan on doing for the rest of our lives to work 80, 90, 100 hour weeks um, where we're taking care of patients. For instance, today I walked in the hospital at 5.30. I just came out. Um, so, uh, 5.30 this morning, I should say, and I just walked out. So, I mean, that's not something, we, we're, we understand we're still in training, but we're just asking not to get paid more, but we're asking to get paid what we're contractually obligated to get paid. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> I'm not resolute, I'm sorry. Anybody else on the public comments? Remind you, if you have five minutes, and please give your name and address just for the record. Yes, uh, my name is David Hughes. I actually live in Highland Park, 330 South 3rd Avenue. I work in New Brunswick, 131 George Street. Um, I am not an intern, uh, and I don't work in the medical school, but I am an anthropologist, and I'm president of the faculty union, the Rutgers AUP AFT. I appreciate very much, Council President, your willingness to take on this matter. Uh, I'm just suggesting it be expedited. Um, because we have a situation where the largest employer in the city is flouting an ordinance of the city. Um, and I deal with management at Rutgers all the time. Uh, and this is kind of a systematic problem. We've probably heard of the cornerstone issue where the university has switched from one software to another and is months late in paying <coughs> vendors, many of whom are businesses in New Brunswick, who are hurting financially. And management says, well, uh, listen, guys, sorry, uh, we're changing, uh, we're migrating, we're crossing over, and stuff takes time, and records get lost, and we'll just have to understand. And these people have been waiting five months, and uh, they don't need to understand. They need their money. And I assure you, when you're a student, and your tuition bill is due on July 1st, and you say to the bursar, well, listen, I, I, I've got this app on my phone, I've got mobile banking, but there's a little glitch in the app, and I'm not going to be able to pay my tuition for another five months, so be patient. Huh, Rutgers is not going to be patient. Uh, so I, I urge you to expedite, and I urge you to understand, which you, I'm sure you do, that these are people who work for the residents of this city, who work for Central Jersey. And I speak as a human being here. My son was born in this hospital. I went to this hospital, the emergency room, to get 34 stitches in my knee the other year. My wife is treated for a heart condition at this hospital. We all, every family, depends on these workers. And they're getting stiffed for no good reason. Professor of Anthropology, but I'm also president of the Rutgers AUP AFT faculty unit. It represents 7,000. It's just not medical students. There's, uh, there's people that I know that I read, that I, or, or, or my relatives, that it's the whole Rutgers Medical School that they're doing it to. 
Yes. All the employees, like you do ultrasound, whatever, everybody. It's a like systematic that. problem for all of the yeah. legacy. They're blaming it on University of Medicine and Dentistry's payroll system, saying that they don't give you, that they don't have the extra week in there. That's the way I understand. Right. It. That's not. That's not an explanation. That's an, That's that's just, just. It's obviously criminal and illegal what the administration of Rutgers University is doing, and they've been doing it for five months in violation of the intention of this city and to the detriment of residents of this city and the services that the city depends on. Thank you. We will Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Council. Anybody else for public comments? Anybody else who step forward? Good evening once again. Charles Craddock of New Brunswick, New Brunswick today. I just want to say off the bat, I stand with the workers of Rutgers University and what, what is being done to them is wrong and that's why I asked you about this at your last meeting and that's why I sent you an email with some information about it and I, I hope that you'll take action quickly. Um, I do want to follow up on an issue that I brought to the water utility's attention last week about discolored gross water coming out of faucets at uh, a building on Home News Row. Can uh, you please ask the water director to speak about uh, what was done after I raised that issue. Mr. Mr. Yes. Mr. President, oh. we're not going to have the water utility director talk about water quality issues or things of that nature with Mr. Crabble for the reasons I expressed in the last meeting about threatened litigation. I had a conversation with Mr. Crabble's attorney this afternoon and told him that uh, in light of the threatened litigation, we wouldn't be discussing these matters with Mr. Crabble. To be clear, the water utility director will not discuss the quality of the drinking water with the editor of New Brunswick today. Yes. Shame. For shame. I hope that others in this audience will get up and ask the question I just asked about the disgusting water coming out of the faucets on the <coughs> news row. But I'll spend the rest of my time talking about ethics. And I'm going to share with you a few complaints. So, first of all, these are for the clerk's office. These are official complaints of ethical violations. There you go. I'll focus my remarks on one that I have copies of for the board, and maybe if there's one extra, you can give it to TK. Pardon me, stepping up here. So, this is an ethics complaint against Mr. Anthony Vignolo. He is the ethics board's attorney. He has not followed the local government ethics law, which requires him to submit a financial disclosure statement once per year. He doesn't think he needs to follow the law that the ethics board that he represents is supposed to enforce. This sets a bad example. This is uh, basically a guy who's part of the problem being in charge of the solution. He's got to go. And I hope that uh, him and his firm are not involved in adjudicating or just uh, uh, dealing with this complaint, because that would be a huge conflict of interest. So uh, it's been said that, oh yeah, we'll get people on the ethics board, and oh yeah, we'll, we'll get around to having meetings and doing things. Well, now's your chance. You've got three ethics complaints before the ethics board. Can you tell me when does the mayor plan to appoint people to the vacant seats on the ethics board? Here the mayor's, yes, that goes to the mayor's office. Yes, when does, when does he plan to, to fill the vacant seats on the ethics board? I know there's a process that uh, we're going through now. I can't tell you exactly when or who the people are that have been identified. But I'm sure it will happen shortly. As you see, there's many appointments that start at the beginning of the year. Okay. And, and can you tell me, does, does uh, uh, Mr. Shammy? believe that Mr. Vignolo is required to file a financial disclosure statement in connection with his work representing the ethics board? I, or is I he above the law? I, I haven't reviewed the law, Mr. Cradle. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. I'd have to do a little research to see whether or not there's any basis for your complaint or your, okay. your ethics violation. But certainly, since you filed a formal complaint, it'll be dealt with and adjudicated. I hope so. Uh, I also need to give an update on the Housing Authority. Uh, I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Escobar for coming to the most recent meeting, where after uh, you know, publicizing that they were breaking the Open Public Records Act, now finally they are starting to uh, respond to some of my requests, which in some cases were several months old. Um, but I do want to address uh, their position, because the Housing Authority 
starts off every response with a sob story that is sick, absolutely disgusting. If they say they can't comply with the Oprah law, which is, of course, the government transparency law, used to be called the right to know law, they say they can't comply with it because, you know, maintenance is really hard there and the buildings are old and, uh, you know, they're trying to help all these uh, uh, people who live there and they just are too busy to comply with this law that they're required to comply with. And they have the nerve to say that I've made incessantly high volume and overbroad fishing type Oprah requests and that I'm substantially interfering with the New Brunswick Housing Authority operations and that far from serving the legitimate goal of government transparency, well, I'm just abusing the Oprah statute and uh, that that has the impact of impeding the NBHA's ability to complete necessary day-to-day -day functions. Consequently, I'm harming the citizens who receive affordable public housing or Section 8 rental assistance from the NBHA and my repetitive, voluminous Oprah requests harm those in need. I think anybody who looks at the facts will see that that's not true. Uh, and if, if it was true, they would probably be making some effort to comply with the law, but they have not until I came to two meetings and caught them and shamed them for not doing their job and not complying with the law. They have a person in charge of the Oprah requests who doesn't know what he's doing and keeps breaking the law, even though they've been sued at significant cost to the taxpayers. This is insane. You know, making the same mistake uh, twice, maybe I can understand. They just keep doing it over and over again. They are either incompetent or corrupt, and if you want some uh, money here, you can just take a look at uh, this. I have copies of this. This is a $600 that was uh, given to an employee named Andrea Ito White. Uh, you're supposed to provide receipts for what you do with the money. There are no receipts. She absconded with 600 bucks. So uh, I hope that uh, maybe they can retrieve this 600 bucks and use that to help all those poor residents Thank that you. they really care so much about at that housing authority. Thank Shame you. on them. Thank you. First, I want to start off by saying, um, for those African Americans who were brought to America by way of transatlantic slave trade, this is the first day of Black History Month. <coughs> if you're not ashamed to be black amongst them, you know, it is Black History Month. And in honor of Black History Month, normally I would ask um, <laughs> TK Shammy a um, black historical question, but I ask all of you guys a question. Um, are you guys familiar with the New York riots, 1863? 1863 New York riots. Anybody? Somebody? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I'll brief everybody. Those who are in 18, <laughs> there. In 1863, there was a draft for the Civil War. And in uh, Lower Manhattan, the Irish decided that they were going to partake in the quote unquote nigger war. So what they did, July from July 13th to July 16th, they uh, burned buildings down, they killed about 200 blacks, they burned several buildings, they even burned a uh, child uh, infirmary, uh, with, you know, adolescent with children, about 200 children, and they had to evacuate the children out of the um, building. and. Um, they just, you know, terrorized the entire town simply because they didn't want to fight in the Civil War and quote unquote what they said, the nigger war. Now, to me, that's the most unpatriotic act in American history that a lot of people don't discuss. Black people were hung, killed, beaten, and we served in every war in American history. Even in World War II, where the soldiers and the lieutenants treated the German prisoners better than they treated the black soldiers. We still fought in every war with honor. And this country never turned out honor. So that's why when you pledge of allegiance, I said that. Because it's a mockery. And anybody who does research on the pledge of allegiance, you wouldn't stand either. I'm not a just go with the flow Negro. I research things. So the Irish were the most unpatriotic race in American history that is not, is not talked about. It's like you black history on that. And that looks even blacks applaud because of that. 
It's okay. But uh, I'll keep it simple. Um, I have one question. Well, I have a few questions, but they all geared to Captain Miller. Um, first, I want to know, I, I mentioned an incident that took place in McDonald's. Um, I didn't have the actual date that it took place, but he does. I'd just like to know what date that that incident took place. Okay. I, mean, I don't know if I'm going to call you tomorrow. He don't call me. He never calls me. I call you every time. I'm going to try you right now. Try my phone right now. You always say you call me. You never call me. Each council meeting, you call me, you never call me. If you give me an email address, I'll email you, and then there'll be a record on it. Well, right. Can I give you your email? No? I'll give it to you when I finish. All right. I have some concerns <coughs> about his uh, response to him not responding to the young lady. I have a lot of concerns. I just can't, you know, it's eating at me. But what I don't do now, what I'm doing now, being that my aunt was disrespected, and, you know, I'm taking these council meetings a little more serious. What I do now is I look at the previous council meeting. Before, I didn't do that. I just let the chip fall away. But now I'm looking at them, and I'm studying, and I'm watching, and I'm looking at faces. So now I'm taking things more serious. And he said that there was an investigation launch. It was by internal affairs, if I'm not mistaken. You're wrong. He's cap. He's sub, what are you, captain? What are you, sergeant? What's your position in internal affairs? Captain. He's captain of internal affairs. And you didn't. You had you partake in any of that? I just told you the internal yes. affairs did not investigate it. From if you asked me, I said no. I kept talking without listening to what I said. Internal affairs did not investigate it. Here's the problem I have. For one, I talk because you're not. You don't never. You ever say anything? You don't have the date. A lady almost lost her life at McDonald's. You don't even know what date it was, but they lost an investigation on it. How could you not? How could he not even have the? This is you let. Could you let him get passes? Hmm? They I'm lost. An, they, they lost. Know. They lost an entire investigation on a situation, and he don't even remember the date. So he can't even, he can't even remember when he was, the date that he was investigating. Now here it is, the, the, council, the meeting prior to that, you know, um, Dominic Quagliotti, if he's in here, he stood up proudly. And he, he expressed how, when I told you about the Fuqua family who entered their house, and he came from North Brunswick on his day off, and stopped them from entering their house, the police were there, but you have two officers, either law's got to change or something, you have two officers who sat in a car while the female was unresponsive. Anybody knows what guarantee motors is, it's no more than 100 yards away. Okay, let me get to it. There's no more than 100 yards away. I'm going to grant you 30, I'm going to, I feel merciful. Hey, hey, listen, listen, you can stop me now, I'll just come back. I know. You can stop me whenever. I'm not going in. I play fair. If that clock go off, stop me. If that clock off, I'll stop you, give me time to do more homework, and I'll come back. Okay, can we? If you, don't, if you can't wrap it in 30 seconds, can we? Hey, listen, I'll, I'll, all right, take, I'll take 30 seconds then. All right, but listen. Two officers. You had, you had, a, you had a person, Dominic Oya, who works for the fire department, who rushed down just to stop people who had permission to go in their home. You had two police officers with a female in the McDonald's who's a, hun a female who's a hundred. I guarantee it's about from here to the public bathroom. Two captains sitting in their car hearing a call about a person in McDonald's that's unresponsive. Now nothing, nobody working in McDonald's but teenagers. So they left that responsibility on untrained teenagers. People who don't know how to respond to emergencies. They left that to the teenagers in McDonald's. And now you have a person who's willing to stop a family. What if that was two firefighters and the building was burning? Would they be allowed to get a pass like Captain Miller and Captain Sable? Like I said, we're, we're at a time right now, but we will, let's continue this. We'll continue this conversation. You have a response for me next meeting? Well, uh, for, there was a read, Captain Miller. I want to know why the city justify that. I, I why are you justifying that? You know what I think? I think that them officers being at that McDonald's was on 27 by right place in the bill. They assumed that that young lady that was unresponsive was an African American. But she wasn't, she just happened to be a white female. But it still could have cost her her life. That's why they didn't respond because of the area they were in. If it was a downtown Burger Kings or a downtown uh, McCain, uh, 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 restaurant, that Chipotle or something like that, they would have responded in the proper manner. But being that they were by the Ville, by the right place, they sat in their cars and looked on their phones while somebody almost died. Thank you. And the city is condoning it. Have some answers for me next council meeting. Yes, my name is Driscoll, the Eric Gilbert, I live over in Ward 
Memorial Two. Uh, I don't know if anybody I'm made it. Yeah, Eric Newber at the Boper Memorial Two. Um, it was one. Don't know if anybody made it out to the uh, protest in March last night, but I really hope you did because it was really a, a sight to see the uh, concerned students at Rutgers combined with uh, concerned and frankly scared residents of New Brunswick coming to air grievances uh, over the recent executive order by President Trump. Um, and it really highlighted that there's a large number of people in this community that are directly affected by uh, these kinds of either already happening or projected legislation that might happen for the next four years by, uh, by our president. Um, and I just ask the council, uh, please do remember that and use any power that you may have over the next four years to really work to protect the marginalized community uh, that resides in New Brunswick who you are. So well, officially, we are, we are a welcoming city to people of all races, all creeds, and the Brunswick, we have a history of that. I mean, going back before our birth in the Latino population, it was in the Hungarian population. Before that, it was the Irish. Before that, there were several other populations. Um, we know that there's a lot of anxiety out there, and what we do, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I know we are working on assuring the, because a lot of us right now, it's a lot of uncertainty right now, everywhere. I mean, across, not just the immigration orders, there's a lot of uncertainty everywhere when this new administration has come in. And I know we're all working towards solutions and trying to put our heads together to make sure everybody's protected. And, um, yeah, and, and I'm glad that you're working towards that. I would just ask that at some point, even though, even maybe at this point, which would be words I think can address to the, uh, the, the citizens of New Brunswick pledging uh, to continue to work to protect them in the face of potentially fascist or oppressive. Uh, Federal orders might really help quell some concerns in the community. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else in the room? To step forward. See you done. Motion to adjourn. Second. Council Vice President Anderson. Yes. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Member Socorro Ludwig. Yes. Council President Fleming. Yes.